Well guys, first month of 2024 has come and gone, and as a result, we have plenty of degeneracy from our favorite struggling YouTube art thief to look at. I hope all of you guys had a good first month of the new year, or at the very least, a better one than the subject of today's report did. The new year has started out filled with everything I've come to expect from Mr. Cartoonist, and has served as an excellent reminder of why he is so disliked in communities that are aware of his existence. So with the introduction out of the way, here is a list of some of my favorite favorite moments from the artist devil slash Mr. Cartoonist slash Mr. Illustrator now that took place primarily during the month of January 2024. And what better place to start than my own on-panel confrontation with the man himself. So Wolfden would host the stream on the 8th of January. I would be joined by GBT and to everyone's surprise, Firewolf Studios, one of Devil's enemies, who actually joined the stream to offer an olive branch to Devil and apologize for some of the things he said while they were fighting. Now just to emphasize, I do not agree with everything that Chris has said over the years, but I definitely commend him for being willing to go up and own up to his mistakes. With that being said, I saw exactly where this conversation was going. Devil was definitely going to join that panel soon, and then it would be three people grilling Chris over his wrongdoings. While the things that Devil has done to Chris over the years, such as making fun of his wife who is in a wheelchair, making comments about physically assaulting her, and mocking his mother who passed away in a car accident, would go completely unmentioned. So in order to stop another instance of Devil's sense of entitlement being completely reinforced, I jumped on the panel in order to add the things that Devil did to Chris to the conversation. Soon after I joined the panel, Devil would follow suit and join as well. The panel quickly devolved into a free-for-all, with everyone fighting for airtime over Devil's psychotic screaming. Even though I did my best to actually argue with him, I could only get like three words in before Devil cut me off and started screaming again. He would yell at Wolfden to remove me from the panel, and eventually, in an attempt to mock the sound of my laugh, he just spent the last 10 minutes or so of the conversation making parrot noises, and just did that instead of arguing. Yeah, it was just as bizarre as it sounds. I was recording the entire conversation, but unfortunately, my phone ran out of battery before I ended the recording, resulting in none of it being saved. I'm still beyond pissed off at myself for this. That is definitely an L on my part. After this chaotic stream, Devil would post a drawing of Black Widow to his community wall, accompanied by a long, demented rant about his YouTube enemies. He would eventually edit the post, hiding everything he said in its original form. What he was trying to hide, and what reason he had for hiding it, remains unknown. I just thought it was interesting. Later, Devil's evil arch nemesis, Captain Crunch, would make a post to his channel, referring to Devil as the Timu Tom Richmond. Tom Richmond being one of the artists Devil steals art from most often. Devil responds to this by claiming Timu was where Captain got his son's Xbox on. The main reason I wanted to include this was to show how often Devil brings other people's kids into arguments with them. A few days later, Captain would make a post on his channel, offering peace to Devil, requesting that Devil removes all the defaming drawings he made of Captain and other people. Drawings that were falsely labeling people as pedophiles, in exchange for the two of them walking away peacefully. Devil would aggressively decline this offer on the basis of our community, quote, going too far. Another instance of Devil refusing to acknowledge his own part in the drama surrounding him, opting to make himself out to be a victim yet again. The next newsworthy Devil action would come in the form of a drawing he posted of Kurt Cobain from the band Nevada. But instead of letting a classic band like Nevada just have its moment, Devil had to include another rant about his enemies with the post. I don't understand why it's always got to be drama with you, Devil. Can we just like sit down for a moment and appreciate the great talent of... Nevada. Later, Devil would post another tantrum to his community wall, bringing up Captain's children yet again, repeating one of his favorite false claims to make, that being that all the trolling he's been receiving on the internet is being done by a racist hate mob that chose to single him out solely on the basis of his skin color. This is, of course, complete bullshit. I think most people will be able to figure this out relatively quickly, but for any newcomers that wind up hearing Devil's side of the story before anybody else's, it's useful to have content like this out there that debunks these kinds of lies, so as little people as possible are led to believe something that just isn't true. I don't know if he genuinely believes this, or if it's just something he tells people to convince them that he's anything more than a horrible person that brings every bit of hate he gets onto himself, but regardless of his motivation for saying it, it's still a false accusation. First of all, if we really were some racist internet hate group that targets black YouTubers, why would we single out some guy that has an average video view count in the tens? The goal of these types of people is typically to spread their hateful ideology to as many people as possible. So to specifically go for this one person 
when there are thousands of PLC creators with way more influence than him just doesn't make sense. And also considering the fact that several members of this quote unquote racist community were friends with Devil and openly defended him for years. And the fact that we have plenty of people in this community of multiple different ethnicities. And what's actually going on here starts to look a lot like Devil being the type of person to treat everyone around him like shit, resulting in people disliking him. If you're listening to this Devil, you're not special. You're not some kind of super victim that was selected as a target by some evil underground organization. You're just an asshole. That's it. And while we're on the topic, this next story is a perfect example as to why Devil has so many people that dislike him. In response to Captain Crunch posting a picture of a salad he made, Devil posts a picture of his own salad in order to compete with Captain. Even though Captain's original salad post had nothing to do with Devil, Devil will compete with pretty much everything Captain posts about doing, regardless of Devil is mentioned or not. Devil's also the same guy who likes to complain about people, quote, stalking and harassing him on YouTube. After describing the contents of his salad, that I'm sure was delicious, by the way, Devil diverts his attention to Frozen, the girl he's been fighting with since she was about 14. Very weird, I know. But shortly before this post was made, Frozen was making some very alarming comments across YouTube talking about how she wants to end her life. Devil's reaction to that, as you can see, was to proudly exclaim that if Frozen were to harm herself, he wouldn't care, and what we're not gonna do is place any of the blame on him. I've heard Devil say a lot of things over the years, but this one is definitely on the list of most vile. Keep in mind, Devil has been actively going at Frozen since she was 14. This guy in his mid-40s has made fun of her appearance, made fun of her artwork, drew very disgusting drawings of her, filmed himself watching her adjust her skirt, contacted her family, among plenty of other things, and he continues to do many of those things to this day. I'm not an expert in this field, so I'm not sure if legally Devil could be held accountable if Frozen were to harm herself being the primary person attacking her for years, but speaking solely on the basis of morality, if Frozen cites online harassment as a motivation for ending her life, Devil would have absolutely had a part to play there. But the most disgusting thing about this post, in my opinion, is his admission that he would not care if Frozen took her life after knowing her for years, having known her since she was a child, and after everything he's done to her over those years, he would be completely unaffected by the news of her death, no sadness, no remorse, nothing. Just straight back to watching WWE and eating Hot Pockets for Mr. Cartoonist. I mean, he could have said anything here. Him ignoring it altogether would have been a better response than the one he actually gave. Him saying he does not care what happens to Frozen at all, with all the history they have together, is, as stated before, one of the most vile things I've heard this guy say. So we all know that he has zero concern for Frozen's well-being. His concern here is the possibility of people attributing him with whatever happens. He doesn't care if the girl he's been harassing for years ends her life. He only cares about making sure nobody points any fingers at him for it. I know I'm starting to repeat myself here, but you just hardly ever come across someone that is so self-absorbed that they will spend years attacking a little girl who's open about having disabilities and severe anxiety issues. And when she talks about not wanting to live anymore, they say they don't give a shit and look for ways to portray themselves as the victim if she does anything to herself. It's as mind-blowing as it is stomach-churning. This type of thing is exactly why Devil gets so much hate on YouTube. Moving on from this showcase of degeneracy. About a day later, Firewolf posts a video called Hot Pocket Gobbler Thanksgiving Squirrel Helper, making fun of Devil for that time people were saying his Thanksgiving dinner looked like a squirrel. Just a harmless joke video, nothing most people would get upset at. Devil, however, would respond to this video by threatening to post pictures of his wife's face. Following this, in the final story of this episode, on another one of Wolfden's streams, Devil would offer a $20 PlayStation gift card to anybody that could give him Captain Crunch's private information. Yep, you heard that correctly. Devil literally put a bounty on Captain's head, the bounty being a $20 gift card. Maybe with that money, I can add some Nevada songs to my Guitar Hero. And that will conclude our Devil News January recap. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope 2024 has been treating all of you well, and for those it has, I hope it continues to do so as the months march along. This has been your host, the one and only talking toaster you'll ever see pretending to be a news anchor, bringing you Devil News.